Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Mirthcast, where today we were going to be playing with a Ruby on Rails application, a 2.0 app that has some baked in RESTful web services, and we're going to also be using uh, the new features in Mirth 1.8 with the HTTP sender and the destination that can take advantage of uh, those RESTful web services. So to get started, uh, we're going to create a a uh, quick Ruby on Rails application, and we're going to start with a database. Uh, we just created a database called episode one underscore development. And then we're going to go ahead and create our Rails application. Uh, we're going to pass it the dash D flag to tell it that it's a MySQL database. And it is created. Now that it's created, we need to make a couple of changes to uh, this application before it'll actually run. The first one is the only one that's actually required is to edit the database.yaml file. And this uh, tells you tells us where the database is, the credentials to get to it, and what the name of it are. And I'll go ahead and fill it out here, uh, username and password, and it should be all for the database.yaml file. And the second one is, uh, in particular, to this screencast, I'm going to turn off the forgery protection that's built into Rails, I think since like 1.2, um, so that this screencast will work. Okay, now that we've made those changes, I'm going to go ahead and create a scaffold. The scaffold will be uh, a patient, and I want to store a column of uh, the patient's name of a type string. And a lot goes on here with this command. And it created some uh, unit tests, the model, controller, and some fixtures. And the next command I'm going to run is a migration. I run my migration. That actually made all the changes to my MySQL database to support this web application. So. Uh, for all intents and purposes, the Rails app is done. I think we should check it though really quick. So I'm going to run Ruby script server, which starts a, a mongrel server running on port 3000. Open up a browser, navigate to our local host. Um, the development environment's bound to port 3000. And I believe it was patience was our controller name. And there is our application. To check to make sure it's working, let's go ahead and quick add a patient. Uh, Make sure all the crud is running, the create, read, update, and delete. And it is, and Rails did a lot of work for us, for us running a couple of commands. So now on to Mirth 1.8. Now here is a channel. This channel in particular takes in HL7 data. There's a couple of configuration things you can set here is to either keep the messages forever or to delete them after a certain number of days. I always set this flag because I forget at times and let them run. Here's our source. It's going to be an LLP listener. Uh, we're bound to 6661. I'm not even going to touch any of the configuration flags on that. And we'll move on to destination. Now, this is where the most of our magic is going to happen. Our destination, we're going to point Mirth at our RESTful web application in Rails. So... It's of type HTTP sender, and here are the new configuration settings. But first, we're going to do some transformations. We don't really need the whole HL7 message that came in. We just need bits and pieces of it. So we're going to build uh, the parts that we want into variables in this transformer. Now, I'm over here in this right-hand pane here, and it will actually take a template file and do some work for me. That way, I can, I can just drag and drop certain elements into my form here. So I'm going to add a step. This is a mapper. I want to map the variable last name to, and I can go to my right here, and it's PID 5 dot, here we go, patient name, family name, last name, boom, and slide it on over. So I'm mapping the last name variable to that particular, particular element in the incoming message. And I'll do it again for the first name. It's a little bit below it. Grab the first name, drag it over, and boom, there are our two variables that we can pass on to our destination. So the idea there was take stuff out of our HL7 message and jam it into our RESTful web application uh, running on Rails. Okay, here is the final configuration we need to make. We need to point the HTTP sender at our Rails app, which was localhost again on 3000 and point it to patients.xml. That's a Rails convention for, hey, I want to um, I want to talk, I'm, re I'm requesting XML and I'm gonna give it back to you. Now our request variables, I'm gonna go ahead and put in uh, patient and in brackets put in name. That was a very tricky thing that 
uh, Jay Bartels helped me out with on the IRC channel. And I'm going to map it to last name, first name. So basically, I'll validate my channel. I'll deploy my channel. And we should be up and running. So now I have Mirth running, and I'm going to test it. And to test it, I'm going to launch an application that can send HL7 messages in. This in particular one is HL7 browser. I've used it for years. Uh, I'm going to connect to the local host LP listener. And now that I'm connected, I want to go back to our web app and show you that, hey, you know, there's nothing in there. So the idea here is I'm going to send an HL7 message into Mirth, and it's going to put something in my web app uh, for me. So I'm going to send in the message. Looks like I got an AA back from Mirth saying I got an acknowledgement. Let's make sure that everything else went okay. Plot back over to Mirth. Here's my dashboard. It says that it received two messages and sent two messages. Take a look at my source. That's the message that came in. Everything looks good with no errors. Now I'm going to check my, my mappings. Yep, it looks like it mapped both of my variables there. Now I'm going to check my web app to see if it actually did the insert, and it did via REST on our Rails 2.0 application. So there it is. The screencast is under 10 minutes, which is the way I like to keep them. Um, again, hope you found it useful, and I want to improve the, the quality and the format of these because that's the point.